One of the biggest problems people have with religion is why are there so many rules? You could ask, why does God have rules? Isn't it just enough that he loves me and I love him? There's a certain sense in which that's the most important thing. But as with any relationship, our relationship with God has rules. Not rules super added on like a legislature passes laws, but rules that actually cons constitute what it means to have a relationship. For instance, if we think of what's the most important relationship we can have on earth, that would be the marriage relationship. And then you think about all the rules that a marriage relationship would have. And even our friendships or dating, all of those relationships have rules. The more serious the relationship, the more serious the rules that govern what that relationship is. In the first commandment, God says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods besides me. If we look at this in terms of a relationship, dating or marriage, to say yes to someone means saying no to everybody else. This is what it means for God, ultimately saying yes to him and no to any other gods before him. In the second commandment, we hear that we shouldn't take the name of the Lord in vain. Name is very something intimate and precious to us, and when we're in a relationship with someone, it's also a very intimate way of speaking with them or speaking about them in a way that reflects our love for them. We would hate to hear a conversation from the other side of the room when someone is using our name and talking about us badly behind our backs, especially if it's someone that we love. Therefore, God has entered into this relationship of love with us, and so when we use his name in a way that's not appropriate to the good that he has given us or the person who he is, pure goodness itself, it's a way in which we disrespect our relationship with God. Imagine you have a date with someone. You're standing there, they're not showing up, they're not responding to your texts, they're not responding to your calls. Then you talk to them afterwards after they didn't show up and you've left and you're upset, and they say, oh, I was just tired. I didn't feel like coming. God has a standing date with us every Sunday in which he wants to give us communion with him in his body and blood to meet us and to show us his love. This date benefits us, and it's up to us to receive that love from him. When we enter into a relationship with someone, it's just not that person that we enter into a relationship with. We also encounter their friends. Our friend expects us to also be at a certain level of friendship and respect with the people that he's friends with. In Commandments 4 through 10, we see that when we, once we enter into a relationship with God, we enter into a relationship with all of his friends, namely everyone that he's created in his image and likeness. Fundamentally, when we look at the rules of a relationship and we see the no's more than we see the yes, then it creates a negative atmosphere in which I interpret the relationship. But if you think of a couple that's going to be married, they're saying no to every other person in the world, not in it, which doesn't make it a negative event. It makes it possible for them to say then yes to one person radically. So in religion, when we see that there's some no's involved, those no's are there in order that we can say yes fully and freely to God to enter into a relationship with him, which brings us happiness and ultimate meaning in our lives. So to focus on the no's is to miss the whole point of our relationship with God, which is a fundamental yes, a fundamental I do to allowing him into my life and to participating in a relationship with him, the most, the most important relationship we can have in our lives.